Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a shiny app for active trading, all coded in R, and I'm going to be using the Trader API. So we're going to be routing orders to Charles Schwab. So let's go ahead and run this app. And just so that we can view this in real time, we're going to have Thinkorswim running in the background as well. So first we pick whether we want to trade a stock or ETF for an option. If the option is selected, it's going to open up more fields. So we need to enter the expiration date, the option side and the strike price, along with the order type, whether market or limit, and whether we want to be long or short or just close out of the position. So we're going to start off by entering a symbol here. So we'll do SPY. Now you have the option to enter the number of shares, the dollar amount you want to trade, or the percentage of the available balance. So we're going to leave that blank for now. We're going to pick the expiration. So we'll go to August 15th. We'll do the call side. And for the strike price, we'll do 645. And we're gonna enter a limit order. Now for the number of contracts, I'm just gonna use the slider to be 50% of my portfolio. It's gonna automatically calculate the number of shares or contracts in this case I need. And I'm just gonna hit on the long trade. And we see that it placed an order for 14 contracts of SPY. Pick the right expiration, 645 call at 130. Now we can also do market orders, but since the market is closed, it's gonna go ahead and reject the order, but we'll do 20% and we'll click on along the trade. And if we take a look at the orders here, it looks like it placed a limit order again. We're gonna go ahead and cancel that. And we're just gonna go ahead and reset the fields. So we'll go to stock or ETF. We're gonna go to option. We're gonna do SPY. We're gonna do 10%. We're going to pick a different expiration this time we'll do a put and let's try shorting the trade so i'm going to go ahead and write the option so it looks like our order got rejected this time it did place the order so it seems like i do have to reset the fields each time i place a trade and the reason why it's not dynamic is because we want to use this app for active trading so for example if we're watching the market and we want to trade tesla and we want to do 50 percent our portfolio and we'll hit long the trade this time it's just going to wait for the market to open to place my order for Tesla. And since this will be a market order, all you have to do is just track it. And whenever you want to close it, you would just leave everything the same and click on flat position. It didn't do anything because I don't have Tesla as an open position. So all the calculations are ran in the background. As far as getting the pricing for the stock or the option, grabbing the dollar amount for buying power and the calculations to auto adjust the dollar amount when using the slider. So that's all the app's capabilities as of now. It's just meant to open or short positions fairly quickly instead of going into Thinkorswim or logging into your account and placing an order there. So let's go ahead and review the code. All right, so to get this to work in Thinkorswim, we're gonna need our functions for the Trader API, which are available on my Patreon. And all you have to do is assign your app key and a secret key and have the valid token binary file. The code will take care of everything else. Our function script contain all the information to place orders, get the buying power. And in this script, you're gonna have to assign two things, which are your account. This will be your brokerage account number and also the hash account. We do have a function called get account number, which you can run and you can extract that information from there which is useful in case you have multiple accounts as well. Now, when we place orders, we're going to have to pass in our hash account. The only time we really use our account number is when getting the buying power. And that's because we have a function to retrieve our account balances. But if you have multiple accounts, we need to specify which one you want to return. So this way things match up correctly when requesting the information. So for this function, we're going to pass in our account number. And from that data frame, we're just going to subset the cash available for trading. Now the API allows us to get real time quotes. So we're going to be using those functions to get the real time price for the stock or the option. And it's fairly simple for the stock. We're just going to be using CS get quote, passing the symbol and extracting the mark price for the stock and if you're running limit orders it's going to be using the mark price so if you want to use anything other than the mark price you would need to make that change in here similarly for the option price we're going to be using the same function except we need to build our option symbol which we do have a function for in the trader api script and again we're going to be using the mark rounding to two decimal places and multiplying by 100 and this way when we use the slider in our app we can calculate the per contract cost in dollar terms next we have our functions to open up market positions for for stocks and options, for shorting, buying, for limit, and then closing out of our positions as well. So these are going to be fairly similar. 
And since we have the majority built out in the Trader API, we're just gonna be using the play single order function where we pass in our hash account, the ticker symbol, the side which will be buy, session will be normal, duration will be day, order type is market, we're gonna pass in our shares, and the asset type will be equity in this case. Similarly for options, we're gonna start off by building the option symbol according to the underlying symbol, the expiration, the side, and the strike. We're gonna pass that into our play single order function. This time we have to change the side to buy to open, and the asset type will be option and similarly to short the stock or option the only thing that's going to change is the side so for shorting a stock the side will be sell and to short an option we're going to use sell to open now for placing limit orders I have only coded up the buy side and for stocks we're going to change our order type to limit and we're going to pass in our limit price and that's going to be calculated from these two functions and to send a limit order for the option again we need to set the side to buy to open the order type gets changed to limit and we're going to pass in the limit price as well now to close out out of our positions we have these two functions so for the first one which is for the options we're going to start off by reading in our positions since this wrapper pertains to options we need to make sure that the asset type is set to option and we're going to scan for any positions whether we're short or long and in case we have multiple options open we just want to make sure that we close out the symbol that we pass in so it's going to detect any option symbols that have the underlying as a pattern and if we do have any positions open we're going to subset our data frame to only that particular row we're going to extract the number of shares and for the side we need to check the sign on the shares so in case we have negative contracts we want to buy to close since we're short otherwise we're just going to use sell to close and finally we're going to close out of the position by using play single order and passing in all the variables and similarly for the stock we're going to be doing the same thing we're going to first request all of our positions check that the asset type is equity and that the position actually exists for either short or longs we're going to subset the row and positions by scanning the instrument symbol that matches the symbol we pass in and if it does exist we're going to extract the shares based from the brokerage if we're short the position we want to buy otherwise we want to sell and then finally just place the single order using in all the variables that we have so that sums up all the functions needed to make the app to work so we'll go ahead and save it now in this first script is where we actually have the app so you would need to change your working directory to wherever you have these two scripts. We're gonna source all of our functions from the second R script. Now, as you saw from the UI, we need to set a title for the app. We have our drop-down menu to select whether we wanna trade options or stocks and ETFs. So as you saw from the app, all of the placeholders and boxes will be within this function. So if you wanna make any changes to the UI, it'll be in here. Now that covers the UI. So what actually happens in the background is within the server, which starts here in line 52. So we have input, output, and session. And we're gonna start off by getting the buying power, updating our balance. So if the user selected an option, we're gonna get the option price from our second script, and we're gonna return that as stock price. Otherwise, that just means that the user selected the stock or ETF. In that case, we're gonna be using our get stock price function, and we're gonna be using that and dividing that by the dollar amount to get the number of shares. Now, we also have to make the calculation for the percentage. So in case you wanna use the slider, we're gonna take the percentage, divide by 100 and multiply by our balance, which is our buying power. And that gets returned into dollar amount. So you can go in either direction there. Now for the three buttons, we have either a long buy, flat position, or short sell. So for the long buy, we're gonna list all of our inputs and add the additional three if the instrument type is an option. Now, if it is an option, we wanna check whether the order type is market. If it is, we're gonna use our function to open up a position at the market price. Otherwise, we need to get the real-time price and we're gonna send in a limit order. Otherwise, it means that the user selected a stock or ETF. Next, we need to check the order type. So again, if it's a market, we're gonna be using our market function. Otherwise, we're gonna get the real-time price for the stock. Now we're gonna pass that into our buy stock limit order function. And finally, after we have placed an order, you'll see an output as you saw from the app. Now to flat our position, we need to make sure what instrument type we have selected. And based off of that, it'll make a determination on which function to use. And again, just print out a message out in the app and then finally to short sell we want to make sure what instrument type we have selected and these are currently only available for market orders so depending on what the user inputs is the type of function that we will be using and lastly just print out a message indicating that we have shorted that particular option or stock if your account allows it and then finally just running the app by passing in the ui on the server so with that guys this concludes the video i hope this was useful information i'll leave a link down in the description area to my patreon where you can find these three scripts please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video